Hi, this is a brief introduction to the effects of blood transfusion and physical performance and the relationship to hemoglobin concentration as well as hemoglobin mass. Several research projects have been executed to demonstrate the effects of blood transfusion and blood loss on performance, oxygen uptake as well as hemoglobin concentration and mass. These are the results of two of these studies. One to the left is from both EPO and actual blood transfusion, where you can see that the change in hemoglobin concentration versus the change in VO2 max really doesn't have any correlation. On the right hand side, you can see that the change in hemoglobin mass, on the other hand, is pretty linear to change in V2 max and thus improved performance. So here how it works. If you have a blood volume of let's say 6 liters uh, and a hemoglobin concentration of 150 grams per liter, you have 900 grams of hemoglobin in your body, which gives approximately V2 max of 4 liters per minute. Now if you would somehow increase the hemoglobin mass to let's say 1050 grams, the body would within very short time expand the plasma volume so that you would keep the hemoglobin concentration constant at 150 grams per liter and the total blood volume of 7 liters. This would increase your VO2 max approximately up to 5 liters per minute, thus enhanced performance. So we can look at it like this. In this tube, the red part represents the hemoglobin mass or the amount of red blood cells. So when you increase the total blood volume with an increase in plasma volume as well, you keep the hemoglobin concentration constant, although you've changed the hemoglobin mass. This gives an approximate increase in VO2 max of about 20% with the reinfusion of two units of blood. If you look at a publication from our group last year, you can see that performance decreased when we withdraw blood, the donation effect, and increased when we gave the red blood cells back to the subjects, the reinfusion effect. And this is pretty standard. Other groups have shown this many times before. What you can also see is that not much happens to the hematological variables, uh, hemoglobin, reticulocytes, etc. So when you calculate the OFSF uh, HR score, for example, it's not really much change with infusion. There's a more dramatic change with the donation. Now, if we try a somewhat more advanced statistical approach by multivariate statistics, and we include up to 18 variables from the blood, we can see that it's kind of a mess. You have control groups, you have clean before and after uh, donation, and you have doped subjects, and they mix. There are some outliers both in the clean group and in the doped group, but there's no clear separation based on hematological variables. The reason is that there are a lot of individual variations in the effects of both blood donation and blood reinfusion. Thank you.